Hi everyone, it's great to have you with us. I'm Henry Powderly, Senior Vice President of Media Content and Strategy at eMarketer, and I'm joined by Lauren Reedy, Solutions Architect at Mountain. Today, Lauren will share practical tips on using AI tools with CTV to help you achieve great outcomes for your brand or client. Hi, Lauren, it's great to have you here. Hi, Henry, and hi, everyone. So excited to be here today. Thank you all for joining. We're really excited to chat with you about AI and how we can put it to work to drive your CTV campaigns. Great to have you here, Lauren. A quick note for our audience, please use the window on the right to chat with your peers and ask questions. And to kick things off, we'd love it if you shared what you currently use for AI in the chat. With that, let's get into it. Lauren, over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Henry. Okay, let's jump right in. I'm gonna share my slides here, which I think you guys should be able to see next to my lovely face there. <laughs> happy Friday, first of all, happy first day of November. We're right into Q4, which is crazy. This year is flying by. Um, but today we're discussing AI, seemingly the hottest topic of this fast paced year. Um, and specifically, how can we use AI to power your CTV campaign performance? So I'll start by introducing myself and Mountain, uh, the company that I'm, I'm working at. So again, I'm Lauren Reedy. I'm a solutions architect here at Mountain. Uh, Mountain is, is an all-in CTV platform, and we really focus on driving the best possible performance for our advertiser CTV campaign. So we think of it as performance TV. Um, performance is really behind everything that we do, including how and where we utilize AI as part of our overall tech and our feature set for our advertisers. And I've been at Mountain here for a little over five years as a solutions architect. Um, I get to help develop strategic solutions for our customers, really again with the goal of making their CTV campaigns deliver the best possible re results. So that can um, come in all different shapes and sizes, but we'll focus today on how um, AI is applicable to that, to delivering those results. So let's start with a, a quick agenda. What are we going to cover today? First, we're gonna review why TV is now a performance marketing channel um, that can really sit comfortably alongside some of your other top channels like paid search and paid social. Um, and then we can discuss ways that AI is really able to help digital marketers like all of you be more effective, not by replacing your jobs or the work that you do, but instead making that hard work go even further. And finally, what are some of the key ways that uh, media ops, creative development, uh, audience development, uh, and performance measurement can really benefit from AI specifically for CTV advertisers? So let's go ahead and jump in. We can kick into it um, and really start by thinking about how CTV has been able to bring TV advertising into this digital age that a lot of our other digital channels are already at. I'd say in the past five years or so, CTV has really continued to evolve into a performance channel, all starting really first with the ability to track and target specific audiences, something that, that wasn't as possible for linear and traditional TV. And then from there, the ability to actually measure performance from TV campaigns through metrics like actual website engagement, actual website conversions and sales. So even if you're already very familiar with CTV, you may not be as familiar with the number of, you know, the actual advancements um, that there have been in this space under this regard. CTV is really far from the same channel it was when it first launched. Um, definitely the, the COVID years kind of kicked it into high drive as more and more people were starting to stream and we the, the industry itself had to really keep up. And it's definitely far from what we still kind of come to expect from traditional linear TV ads. So we often think of TV advertising as cumbersome to manage, sometimes more imprecise when it comes to strategy and planning and typically expensive to actually run. Obviously, the first thing that we all think about when we think of a TV commercial sometimes is that Super Bowl ad and, and how much that costs, how much it costs to produce and how much it costs to actually run that ad spot. Um, but now we've made CTV a lot more wildly, widely available and affordable. Um, targeting, tracking and measurement have really allowed CTV advertising to become a lot more efficient, a lot more agile, 
and chock full of actual data. So we're tracking all sorts of data inputs across the board from you know the actual household and the characteristics that we're targeting, the geos, the TV network, um, all of this data all the way down to actual website sales and conversions. And so while all of this data is, is great, we love as much data as possible in this industry, certainly too much data can sometimes feel a bit confusing and maybe even overwhelming to use in practice. And when we're actually managing you know, our campaigns, we could use all the help that we could get to make sure we know where to begin, what key observations can we pull out of this large, large data set, and really you know, how can we maximize the impact of all of this measurement data that we're collecting. So certainly this is a great application of artificial intelligence um, and, and something that it can really help with for marketers in this space. Um, so if you don't wanna take my word on it, which you, you never should, many of you don't even know me, <laughs> um, we can look at some recent studies. This one here is from IAB and it actually shows the majority of advertisers. This is from last year, by the way, but or sorry, this from this year. It shows the majority of advertisers um, are now measuring CTV success through actual performance outcomes. So these are KPIs like revenue, conversions, return on ad spend, again, like real actual digital outcomes from their campaigns. So 54% of respondents in this survey said that outcomes are the priority over other um, options like reach and frequency, views and impressions, brand awareness or consideration, all you know important um, KPIs for TV campaigns but second to actual performance outcomes, again, like revenue conversions and ROAS. And then if we look to this study here, it, it's kind of telling a similar story, but on the other side of the coin. So even though performance outcomes are the priority for CTV advertisers, they're actually seeing that measurement is, continues to be their biggest challenge. So this is over additional challenges like user consent, cross-channel reconciliation and data activation. So really the priority across the board is being able to measure true outcomes from your campaigns. Um, that is the most important thing that we wanna see from the campaigns, but also the most difficult thing to continue to measure specifically with CTV. Luckily, our technology does continue to advance. So tools like AI have many practical applications for an industry like CTV. It's definitely allowing us to specifically respond to those concerns like measurement, data analysis, and optimization. Like many other industries, um, you know, the, the substantial impact of, of AI in the CTV space has certainly sparked some concerns and hesitations. I think we all share a lot of the, the main ones, but it's definitely important to keep in mind that AI tools should be thought of as useful and user-friendly. Um, and definitely offer you know a deeper level of personal control for a, for human led checks and balances, right? We don't want to let AI kind of run the show on its own. We want to make sure that it's helping us to run the ship in a more effective and efficient way. So while it can be super super powerful and should be, it should never work in in an unchecked nature. Um, and definitely while there's a ton of applications for generative AI across digital advertising, many, many more than we could cover in, in today's session, um, we wanted to specifically go to three of our really top applications for artificial intelligence. First being media, media ops, second being measurement and reporting like we just talked about, um, and lastly, creative development as well as audience um, insights. So. Those are kind of the three topics that we're gonna go into detail on today. We'll start with media ops. Um, so I think performance optimization and, and bid management are probably one of the earliest and um, most common and, and honestly impactful uses of machine learning in ad tech. This, there was definitely a huge opportunity here to improve this more manual system of analyzing performance data, trying to de deduce or infer learnings from this large data set you know, that we've just started collecting. And then once we take those learnings, implementing actual adjustments and then reviewing the data and starting the process all over again. So you know, I think about, I've only been at Mountain for five years, but I think about many, many years ago when I first started, 
we had an entire team of performance analysts who were doing this type of work for our advertisers. Um, and right when I had started, they were just starting to build out our automated optimization engine to take over a lot of this kind of optimization and bid management from them, powered by generative AI. And now, you know, with automated optimization tools like we have at Mountain, it allows our advertisers to no longer, or our internal teams no longer waste time, you know, building large data sets, um, trying to pull out some assumptions or, um, you know, trying to look at the data and figure out what are the next optimizations that I need to make and what is going to have the biggest performance impact. Now AI can be a lot more ag agile, a lot more efficient, and honestly, faster and smarter <laughs> than any of the hard, smartest humans who are trying to do that, those same calculations in real time. Um, we're just, you know, we're, we're just people. We, we honestly, as smart as we are, we can't move as fast as machine can sometimes. So um, we're happy that the, the industry has come to this space, but of course, keep in mind that not all automation systems are created equal. Certainly still to this day, we know there's some solutions out there that, that do continue to use some human buyers behind the scenes, or they have an algorithm that really just focuses on things like lower CPMs or lower quality inventory as a means to improve campaigns. Um, and so they're not putting in a lot of data or a lot of um, more sophisticated algorithms to get better outputs. But just to, to kind of back up and um, double tap on a reminder of what that life was like for a media buyer without any automation in the, pixel, in the picture, this is maybe a shorter list, um, but all of the steps that went into ad buying and planning to basically just launch and optimize a single TV campaign. I won't go through every single step because it's it's gonna be a lot to even remind us how much back and forth there was in those days. But this type of kind of ongoing drudgery is really what made advertising painfully inefficient and slow. By the time you, you were able to extract learnings from your campaign, then got the approval to make the changes, then made the changes, then looked at the data, most likely that data that you have is already stale. So you're already behind um, new optimizations and improvements that you could have made. So luckily, the right AI and automation tools not only make advertisers' lives less monotonous, um, but it also makes it easier for them to actually reach and convert audiences. So it's not just about saving time, but also about driving better performance, right? We're actually able to get better outcomes when we're able to use AI to improve upon this model. So taking that drudgery out of media buying um, drives better outcomes. It also frees up a lot of time and energy for marketers to then focus on bigger picture challenges. So think about, you know, more high level creative production, um, audience and persona targeting, overall campaign and budgeting strategy, all of that, you know, is we now have a lot more time to look at that big, bigger picture and implement better strategy. But, you know, surprisingly, or maybe just surprising to me, this kind of manual campaign management and bid management, it hasn't just been limited to limit linear channels. We're still seeing it be prevalent across the streaming space as well. So I think that still leaves a lot of opportunity in this space to really drive efficiency and efficacy really in the CTV field. But luckily, I would say efficiency and efficacy could be AI's middle names. That's really what they're, they're here to produce. And there are many programmatic ad solutions that use algorithmic tools to automate that, that buying uh, and selling of digital inventory. And we know that, like I said, this does give advertisers a clear advantage, right? The scale and speed needed for media buying are, are truly impossible for a human buyer to keep up with on their own. So by foregoing that, that manual ad placing process, advertisers are really able to create new rules for where, when, and how their ads are then able to launch. Um, so to give you an idea of, of what this can look like, um, obviously I have Mountain at my disposal. So we pulled an average number of optimizations that Mountain's machine lear learning automa automation engine is uh, making on a daily basis. 
sorry, that was a lot of jargon <laughs> thrown into one sentence. Um, but we were, able, we were seeing that over 650,000 actual optimizations are made each day by our algorithm. So obviously way more than someone like me or even the fastest and brightest media planner could think to do, let alone actually execute in a day. Um, and just think of how much further, you know, this type of dynamic optimization gets you. So the, the faster changes means new performance data to then analyze and an overall sh shorter learning process, which will get you to better results faster. And then again, new optimizations to make already. Um, so I think this is more impactful if we, you know, if we put it into an example. So let's take an ad buyer for a shoe brand, right? This time of year, we're in the fall. We, you may be looking for, you know, how is your fall focused creatives performing in specific regions of the country? So with enough performance data, let's say, you know, you've been in market for the month of October with your fall ads, you might conclude that sales are still really, really slow in some of the the southern coastal states. I'm in Los Angeles. The sun is shining brightly out here still. Um, and that's why, right? It's likely still too warm in those regions to be selling your rain boots. So maybe you, you know, you do this analysis and you pull budget from these re regions um, or even make a switch to your late summer creatives for these regions. Um, by the time you implement that and and have it in market for November, Potentially the weather has now turned and these regions are actually ready for your fall products. So you're a little bit behind on that process, right? With real time automated optimization, AI is, is actually able to identify these trends a lot faster and earlier on in the process and at a more granular level, right? So they're not just looking at the region, but maybe all the way down to certain cities and zip codes that are performing well um, and able to automatically push or pull budget based on you know those more granular insights and the real time trends that they're seeing. So then when let's say sales and engagement do start to pick up for some of the warmer climates, AI is already able to respond with those immediate optimizations, increasing budget and pushing more you know, of those fall focused ads in the market. So you don't have to miss out on an opportunity to sell those rain boots and those galoshes once the, the rain does start pouring, if it ever does here in LA. Um, so again, really making it more effective for advertisers to be making quick decisions in market. And to give you a, a better idea of um, really how that machine learning AI can work in automated bid management and campaign optimization, again, I can obviously point to Mountains Tech, which focuses on real-time analysis like we talked about to drive towards those campaign KPIs and those those campaign goals are set forth by the advertiser. So that input comes from the user themselves. Maybe this is a, uh, a campaign that really wants to focus on ROAS, or maybe it's a campaign that really wants to focus on reach or just you know site engagement to the website. All of those are gonna adjust how the optimization engine is then making decisions and optimizing those campaigns and uh, allocating budget within the market. Um, it also takes input from our wealth of performance data that we're collecting, like we talked about. So um, all of that performance data that we're ingesting down to, you know, the geo network, creative audience level, it's using those to power decisions to make new optimizations. Um, and like we saw, we're making hundreds of thousands of optimizations a day and then intelligently balancing both cost and opportunity. So bidding aggressively on must have inventory at the absolute best price and getting in front of consumers when we think they're most likely to convert. Um, so again, our AI is, is kind of a, evaluating a countless amount of variables to ensure campaigns are really operating at that peak performance, constantly adjusting things like frequency to pace budget um, and, and really just making sure that campaigns are running efficiently. To talk a little bit more about how we're powering that type of engine and um, you know how this can work for, for any AI driven bid management or optimization, automated optimizations in the space. Again, we really want to think about what is that, where is that data source coming from? And is it robust enough to be impactful? Um, so it's, it's definitely essential to have really measurable and accurate data from your advertising campaigns to drive this AI. As we already discussed, luckily CTV has come a really, really long way in this regard. That ongoing improvements to 
cross device attribution now allows us to accurately try, track things like site engagement, visits to the website, actual sales and revenue on the website, um, and then measure this across a lot of different di dimensions of your ad campaigns. So again, geo down to you know city or zip code, TV network, creative, et cetera, very similar to what you do with all of your other digital channels. And AI really does help the accuracy of that ad me measurement by creating a data-driven feedback loop. So it kind of all works together. Um, and now marketing campaigns don't need a team of data scientists to, to really measure or optimize them constantly. Instead, more than ever, you know, as we know, we need to be faster, we need to be more agile, so we don't have to wait for those manual processes and updates, you know, kind of like we discussed with that shoe brand example. And instead, we can use practical AI to measure, report, and act upon the wealth of data that we have. To talk about some practical uses of um, actual measurement from CTV campaigns, again, that one of that, the key pillars of a successful AI output is having robust, thorough, and up-to-date data that feeds it. Um, certainly something that you want to think about when, when trusting a machine learning algorithm to power your CTV campaigns. And also just that you have enough of that performance data to make impactful and, and statistically significant bid decisions. So some data, you know, that they will want to look at, which I've kind of mentioned already a little bit, but the keyword, things like audience keyword reporting. So looking at more granular characteristics of the audience to make optimizations. Um, and also this, you know, this is data that you can use and carry over as insights into other channels like search and social. So really, you know, this example here, we're looking at specific keywords for this B2B advertiser around software, cybersecurity, workflow management, et cetera. Um, additionally, you'll want to look at granular data around where are we serving the ads? So TV network reporting, for example, measuring exactly where the ads are running and where your audience is ingesting media. Uh, geo reporting, very similar, but looking at geos, you know, from state to city to DMA level um, to, again, see exactly where your audience lives and, and where are we seeing the best performance across the, the country. Um, and then additional reports like incrementality to give you an idea of what are the, you know, what are the true results that CTV is actually driving compared to the results that you might have received anyways. So having a control audience to compare your performance against to see what is that incremental impact that we were able to have. Um, and then with Mountain, you can even track performance data into our partners like Google Analytics and Rockerbox so that we can then power their own applications of AI analysis and optimization. Um, and here at Mountain AI, you know, works in the background in a, a variety of different ways to optimize data and produce those exceptional results that we see for our advertisers, similar to what we've reviewed today. Powering all of our performance measurement is actually our proprietary cross-device verified visit attribution model. So that is designed to solve one of the bigger um, and more legacy problems of CTV measurement. Basically, the, the inability to connect TV ads impact to actual website outcomes since TV ads are clickable and you're not often purchasing shoes from your TV. Um, so our verified visit attribution made it possible for marketers to have a more accurate and deterministic way to view unique performance driven by their CTV campaigns. So to, to, to validate that cross-device activity of a user within a household, we use cross-device identifiers like household IP, device ID, Google Analytics ID, and many other behavioral signals as well. So again, our priority here is to ensure that we have the most accurate and trustworthy and up-to-date data to not only measure the success of our performance TV campaigns and our reporting, but also to power our AI optimization engine and continue to get better results. Um, so what are some other applications of AI in the CTV universe? Um, I think an, a very common one that we, we think of a lot and gets a lot of attention is video creative production. So as we all know, TV commercial ad production is arguably one of the most expensive and truly time-consuming creative projects in the digital world. 
from start to finish, we've seen that it can take months and cost tens of thousands of dollars to produce a, a good, impactful TV commercials. You know, so maybe even more if you're going for that big Super Bowl ad slot. Um, so as you can imagine, anything that AI can do to really speed up and reduce the cost of this process would be a complete game changer. Um, that said, I think we've all seen applications of AI in building creative, you know, whether it's a video or an image, sometimes they can be inaccurate or, or a little off-putting. I feel like AI still can't figure out how to get human hands correct. They're always like either disproportionate or sometimes they're missing entirely. Something is off there. Um, so honestly, like with any other AI application, this should not be a complete end-to-end -end solution without any oversight. And instead, you know, AI can really assist in a lot of the, the steps in that creative process to help make it more efficient and impactful because it is a long and arduous process. So anywhere that AI can help is going to be important. So for example, AI can substantially assist in things like creative brainstorming, writing actual narratives, building visualizations or storyboards, um, and even actually producing the videos based on the prompts and the oversight that you give it. Um, so like I said, the opportunity here is really, really huge. You know, as this technology continues to develop, both from, you know, platforms like Mountain and, and many, many others, it's going to be a game changer, continue to be a game changer for the TV ad industry to make this a much more efficient and effective process to get ads in market faster. Um, so we're really excited to continue to see advancements in that space. Um, and then one more application and a really great application of AI in the CTV space is um, on the audience targeting side. So with generative AI, we're able to go beyond kind of more traditional audience targeting and, and actually use consumer behaviors and in-market indicators to match your brand with your next consumers. So different than just saying, you know, someone who's interested in Nike shoes, we're matching Nike to someone who's currently in market and has expressed, you know, consumer and shopping behaviors that says, I'm ready to buy right now. Um, so this is a, a truly powerful use of AI to drive more immediate and better results, um, primarily by, by reducing a lot of wasted ad impressions that we see on households or audience that are, are really just not relevant or currently interested in your brand or your products. Um, and so in taking out those wasted ad impressions, we can really focus on the, the audiences that are most likely to convert. And it also really just takes the guesswork out of, you know, what audience characteristics you should invest your budget in, what type of persona should you build. That often can be a, um, you know, a time consuming and arduous process of campaign planning and also in optimization. So letting AI help uh, in first, you know, building out a customer profile for you and then also help in then matching or finding audiences that fit the bill for new consumers of your brand. Um, at Mountain specifically, we call this Mountain Matched which I have an example of here, um, but it's exactly what it sounds like. So we're matching brands to their next consumers and we're using generative AI to recommend keywords that really align with that brand and their existing customers. It does take it one step further to use those keywords to identify, again, the more high intent and in-market households that are most likely to convert now. Um, so really helping not just take the drudgery and the guesswork out of the marketer's hands, but power stronger and faster results for their CTV campaigns. Okay, I'm sure I took up a lot of your time and I know I talked a lot, but um, hopefully you picked up on a lot of the, the key themes that we talked about today. Wanted to quickly review a few of them from our conversation just to make sure they hit home before I let you all go on this Friday. Um, so to start, we talked about the transformation of CTV in the past few years, bringing it into the data-driven and digital age and turning it into a performance channel just like search and social. And with the influx of data in this industry, it has set the stage for AI to enter the chat. And across the board, AI has been able to help marketers do their job a lot better and faster rather than replacing them entirely. Um, and as we know from some of the AI fails we've all seen, it can't go unchecked. It still needs human oversight and accurate, reliable data inputs. 
And finally, we covered a few of the different ways that AI is able to assist in CTV advertising, including media ops, creative and audience development, and measurement and reporting. So that brings us to the end of our run through today. I really hope this was a helpful review of all the exciting applications of AI, both right now and soon to come in the future. Um, I know, Henry, we did hopefully save some time for Q&A, so I'll pass it over to you to see if we have any questions from our audience. Great job, Lauren. Great presentation. Unfortunately, we don't have any time for Q&A today, but you definitely gave the audience a lot of good tips to think about. So I want to thank you for being here. Uh, we really appreciate these insights. Uh, it's been a great session. Amazing. Sorry, I, I have a lot to say about AI, but, but <laughs> yeah, I hope that was super helpful. Well, we'll have to do this again. Um, next up is our final session of the day, the, the Physical Retail Renaissance with Placer.ai's Ethan Chernovsky and eMarketer's Marissa Kozlov. Join them by clicking on next session above the chat on your right. And don't forget, if you have any issues, you might need to refresh your browser after you join the session. I want to thank you all for joining the eMarketer Summit and enjoy the rest of the show.